up guys? Uh, week 7 recap here. I got my fresh cap on. So uh, let's get this show on the road. Uh, starting with a reminder. Uh, we are going to be on auction system for this week for uh, on waivers. Um, I've talked to a couple of people already about pulling uh, uh, between the auction and the idea I posted on the forums. Because uh, a lot of people, people have been voicing their concerns about that. I, I'm personally going to vote for the auction system, but we can't like, ignore the fact that other people want that as a possibility. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Uh, let's start off with the matchups. Um, fuck you, Gumby, versus three Johnsons and a Woodhead. Uh, starting with my matchup again. Uh, I took out Bram in an important divisional game. Thought I was gonna, I was in some trouble with uh, two of my running backs out, uh, Cedric Benson and Ben Jarvis, but uh, Demarco Murray stepped up to say the least. He had a huge day, uh, 31 points, and he broke the rushing record for the Cowboys, uh, Cowboys franchise. Uh, let's take a look at his 91-yard run. Romo on a delay, hands up to Murray, DeMarco Murray. Going all the way for the touchdown. 91 yards for the score. what he does really well he sells pass here it looks like pass all the way that freezes the linebackers good block by 24 the fullback Tony Fia Meta and DeMarco Murray does the rest of the work making Quinton Michael the safety beat then he uses that speed to go all the way to the end zone great play and execution by the Dallas Cowboys and that's the longest play from scrimmage of the season for the Cowboys and there is the fake on Quinton Michael Yep, pretty sweet. Uh, Bram had a pretty average week, 103 points. Uh, continuing to get a little bit, little production out of uh, Chris Johnson. Uh, caught a bad break with Santana Moss, broke his hand in that game, but uh, his QBs has uh, had had a good week. Um, I'm taking on Gallagher next week, week eight, and Bram takes on Zach to claim the territory of Via Marcella. All right, next matchup. Uh, more problems versus run DMC, and uh, I know it's getting it old, and I know I said it last week, but poor Zach. Uh, he's projected for 156 points at one point, then uh, McFadden goes down with an ankle injury, and he didn't live up to his lofty projection. Uh, McGahey and Stafford also go down in that week. Uh, Forte still put up 24 points, and uh, wasn't enough. Uh, Cam Newton held the torch for Widges with 26 points, and he continues to have a great season. Uh, let's take a look at one of the sickest QB scrambles this year. On third down. Cam Newton, back it up. Cam Newton! First down and he's still loose! All right, Zach takes on Bram next week, and Witch faces off Gersh in Week Eight. All right, next matchup is Holy Tits versus Breeze Knees. Uh, probably one of the funnier football moments in this matchup. Uh, Gersh was at my house for the one o'clock games, and uh, we were on the Red Zone channel. Uh, so the channel pops up. Marshawn Lynch is on the screen with his uh, hands in his face, towel over his head. Uh, he was out for the game with back spasms. Um, so by, bad break there for Gersh. So we keep watching, or not? So we go on ESPN. Like they didn't release any information until the game started. So there's nothing he could do there. Uh, then we, so we keep watching first quarter. Uh, there's a game update for the Buccaneers. Buccaneers game. He has uh, Ernest Graham, and uh, Gersh sarcastically, sarcastically says, uh, "Oh, watch Ernest Graham be injured now for the game." Sure enough, he. Uh, the screen cuts to him falling on the turf. Uh, he's out for the game with a torn Achilles, I think. So, bad break for Gersh there. But, uh, Dev had a good week. 33 points from Breeze. So, uh, let's take a look at Dev's uh, leading scorer in Breeze, airing it out against the Colts D. He's not ready. All right, the ensuing yeah. Saints possession. He's ready. It was like a clinic. Breeze to Marcus Colston. What are you going to do there? Colston's so big. Yeah, you get the tall receivers, huh, Mike? Let them fight it out with those DBs, and most of the time, the tall receiver wins. And Drew Breeze, 34 straight games, touchdown pass. Drops this screen off to Pierre Thomas. 57 yards. 
man, and, and, and very few teams in this league runs the screen better than the New Orleans Saints. Second and goal now, it's Breeze back to Colston who takes a shot, but he's in. Colston's second touch of the game, Saints on top, 14 to nothing. Okay, Gersh takes on Widge next week, and Dev takes on Matt. Alright, uh, next matchup is Fred and the Shipums versus Poet, and he knows it. Uh, Galgar was receiving some uh, heckling on the forums for possibly having the lowest scoring week, but uh, Matt comes out of nowhere and puts up 55.6 points, which is the uh, lowest scoring week in league history. Uh, 1.4 points less than Widges last year in week 5, so that's no good. You know you're in trouble when you have uh, Curtis Painter and Jonathan's, uh, Curtis Painter's in your lineup and Jonathan Source your leading scorer. You know, you're not in good shape. But uh, Andrew put up a solid week uh, based around Arian Foster at a monster game, like 40 points. Uh, Michael Bush also put up 11, which is kind of surprising. Well, McFadden got injured that game, so he got more carries and stuff. Um, yeah, let's check out some Arian Foster highlights since he clearly was the best player in this, line, in this matchup. Chris Johnson has been slow to start this season. Second quarter thing. Arian Foster just had a monster game for Houston. Tennessee was not able to stop him. He picks up 16 yards running to the left. And then Matt Schaub with the dump off pass to Foster. He's able to make a move and break some tackles. He picks up 26 yards on that play. And just a big time catch here. As the play action fake went to Foster, then they lost track of him. He goes down the sideline, makes a cut, slips past the defense. He will run it all the way for a touchdown, a 78-yard touchdown catch for Arian Foster. They would lead 20 to nothing on the road going into... All right, Andrew takes on Tony in uh, next week's matchup, and Matt takes on Devin. All right, uh, next is Wild Wild West at Hey Jordy, It's Your Birthday. And uh, I wasn't sure which was the queer name, uh, Hey Jordy, It's Your Birthday, or Flaming Homosexual. But uh, regardless, Tony was the victor with only 96 points. Colston put up 22 points to help Tony's team. And Matt Castle uh, chipped in his usual 2.2 .2 points, so props to him. Uh, if it wasn't for Ben Roethlisberger's sexual assault of the Arizona defense, Scalger probably would have had the worst week in league history uh, or it would have been at least close to Matt um, yeah I guess with uh, Wes Welker not dropping 30 burgers every week Gallagher's team is pretty mediocre so find that out uh, besides Ben uh, nobody scored above 10 points on Gallagher's team Witten had 9.5 but uh, let's check out some highlights to sum up this matchup Get down, get down. Ah, uh, good job. Alright, Tony takes on Ellinger next week, and I'm facing Gallagher, week 8. Alright, that's all for this week's recap. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, feel free if you want to text me. If you want to come watch the games on Sunday, my house is usually available. Just make sure you contact me, because it might not be, and I don't want you to show up with no one there. So, uh, anyway, check the LM poll uh, for another vote. But uh, this week, remember, it's auction, it's auction waivers. I don't want to hear, it'd probably be Tony, no offense, but bitching about how everyone put in money for the waivers this week. Uh, also, get your 20 bucks to myself or Ellinger so we can pay you when you win. All right, later, guys. Good night, Canada.